This is Navajo Grandma, and uh, we are, guess where? We are at the eye of the needle. And you're going to hear some people screaming and having fun up there. We don't know. These are recreational, recreational people. But um, we're going to go back to Lisa Barrios, and her question to Grandma was, um, Grandma, how about sewing? Like, what did your grandmas, great grandmas, use for thread and needles in the time there? There were none. And Lisa, there were three at thread and needles in the lives of our ancestors. And the difference is, it was unlike the threading needles of today. And like these, okay? A brief history, uh, I mean, Grandma's gonna give like the archaeologists and anthropologists have discovered sewing needles with eyes dating back to 17,500 BC, which were likely made of bone and used to sew skins and furs. The earliest, the earliest needles were made of bone or wood or porcupine quills, and Native American as a whole created what they used such as uh, tools, clothing, needle, and thread from their environment all around. And they were simply creative. Their spiritual connections with the Creator and great respect giving back what they used. Thus, Native Americans made cord and thread from the fibers of many plants trees, including evergreen roots, and other material such as animal sinew and rawhide. Cords from soaked sinew or rawhide strips needs to be dried in a tightly stretched position or the twists will loosen. Now you will see, Grandma's going to show you, okay, some things that were mentioned were about the bone. Uh, some of them were made of, like I said, from the deer. Uh, these are deer bones. These are porcupine quills. Look, look at that. And then, and these again were uh, the bone with the sinew. These are fish bones. The Native Americans, no matter what their environment was, they found ways and means to, uh, they found ways and means to make needle and thread. An example are needles fashioned from deer, fish bone, porcupine quills, and curved rib cage bone, yucca sharp ends, and again, what was in the Native American environment, environment was used. Historically, Native Americans used bone needles of many types from their environment to sew clothing, nets, mats, baskets, and shoes made from bark, yucca, and animal skin. They wove and sewed their needs. The Diné used deer, buffalo, and elk bones. The deer bone used came from the lower leg for one example. You remove the skin and sinew using the bone channel elongated part. Uh, you scored it and then with the sharp stone and stone hammer or rod, you hit it enough to split the narrow, uh, the marrow several times. Thereafter, you take the slivered bones using roots. You rounded out the bone for dimensions for a needle. The hole was created by pushing, twisting, using an elongated, uh, sharp rock after soaking and softening the bone. Um, basically, the side note was clothing came from the carefully softened and tanned hides of animals, particularly deer buckskin. An animal sinew was used as thread. The sinew 
can be broken up into separate thin fibers, which are hard and stiff when dry but became supple when wet. Sinew also expands when wet and shrinks as it dries out. Women sewing with buckskins would keep a supply of sinew in their mouth to wet it, except for the ends which remain very stiff and hard. Using an awl of sharp bones, later iron obtained through trade, a series of holes are made in the pieces to be sewn, then the sinew was threaded through the holes. The stiff end of the sinew meant that no needle was required, and as the damp sinew stitches dried out, they shrank and tightened. Sewing created the moccasins, yucca shoe fibers woven, rug dresses, like they call them bil, uh, they were sewn together, and some in what men wore as such as breech cloths and leggings, plus the intricate beading by the Plains Indians, and conchos sewed onto the Diné clothing mimics the Spaniard Spaniards clothing using silver conchos, and the silver metal mimicking conchos. Clothing styles and tools used were determined by the environment and climate. Diné and Southwest tribes grew cotton, spun, used mulberry bark and sagebrush, and yucca, sheep, and goat wool. The reason why Grandma came here for this video, uh, Lisa, is because it's called Eye of the Needle. And this is absolutely beautiful if you kind of look around. Oh, look how beautiful. It's gorgeous. I'm doing it really, really quick. Now I might have some recreation people jumping up and down there. I don't know. The, what Grandma always writes, this is Native American needle and thread from their environment. Okay, so I have the rock. The wind is blowing. It's supposed to snow and rain tomorrow. You heard Grandma say in the March video, you have sunshine, then all of a sudden there's snow and, and uh, rain. Anyways, so we're going to start off really quick. Uh, uh, this is Grandma just doing what Native Americans did. Here's some pine. I took some pine. Here's an apple tree uh, branch. And... And here is an acorn branch. And I will show you what I did. Now I took these raw materials and used this rock. Notice it's sharp. And there were several that I used that had sharp ends. And they were used to scrape the bark off now, I've already done this before, and notice Grandma's going to scrape the bark using the rock. Now, this was not quick, and it, it's, it's tedious work, but notice it takes a little bit to do this. And you had to do the whole thing, and that's what Grandma did. So you take the bark off, and this is the acorn. And, and again, these are the rocks. Now when you wanted to um, smooth it down you use and grandma used this as her do uh, you know like a grinding stone i basically uh, smoothed it down and i smoothed this whole thing the same way okay and this is the pine all right so you have your sharp in rock, you have your grinding stone as well as your scraper or your cutter. Now, now we're always thinking of this, that just like today, we have to change our mindset while we're le learning this. Everything is made of steel and it's sharp. Well, back in the day, it wasn't necessary that these items needed to be sharp. Now here is the apple, okay. We made a long needle. This is the pine, and this is the acorn. Now we we took uh, we chiseled this out with an elongated rock. Okay, so and then burnt it as well. So we have the eye of the needle. 
it's much like the eye of the needle that we're at and anyways when native americans some used the eye of the needle and lo and behold you have your needle you uh, had your uh, buckskin or whatever and what they did was they made holes and these were again you didn't need to pierce it you just took it through the hole notice it was very easy okay and for the ones that don't have the hole uh, you wrapped it and then use that as such okay and you use that as as a thread so uh cre the, notice this is all creative creative ways of 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 making the needle you know and so and no notice they're blunt they weren't to sh have a sharp sharp uh anything to uh, use that was sh made sharp now we'll take it take that thought back now um these are yucca, the tips of the yucca bacata. And grandma did the same thing here whenever these were dried and were no longer. This is the yucca bacata, okay? Uh, let's explain that really quick first. Notice how thin the leaves are. If you have anything wider than this, you don't have the yucca bacata. Okay, so once these were no good, grandma cut the tops off and thus they were like this. And you did the same thing. You made a hole and you wound the sinew around there and you could pierce uh, whatever it is. And usually they were woven, woven yucca and for shoes and, you know, mats. You use that to pierce uh, you use this to pierce that type of wear. And I will show you, now this is kind of old, uh, but how you use this uh, is by taking, let's see, a rock like so, and you laid it down, and you made sure that you could flatten it out, and you rubbed it, and you flattened it out. Now, when you do that, you're taking all of the liquid out of here, the um, saponins or whatever, and it makes it so more pliable. And then you take your fingernail and you pull these and you'll end up with a lot of thread. Now, that is what you do. Here is an example. Now, this is what I did. I pulled it apart. I noticed how thin it can, the thread can be. And I, I took this side. I mean, I, I basically uh, braided this part and pretend like that's not there. And then you have your, your thread. This became a thread. And what would happen was you, you cut this off. And so you actually just carried this as a needle and thread. Okay, it became an automatic needle, needle and thread, and it's very, very strong. And this is what you used to sew the yucca shoes and the mats. Smart. And again, uh, these are ways and means, Lisa. And here is the sinew. And sometimes they were, they, you know, they were all different sizes, okay? These are store-bought. Grandma didn't go and chew the sinew. I don't think I could. But, and here is leather. And they also did the same thing. So when they pierced holes in the leather, the hide for clothing, they just uh, carried, you know, uh, they put their, you know, they just uh, used their own hands to put through the, the, you know, to guide this through the holes and it was tedious work you just didn't get a pair of pants or a pair of you know breech claws in one day you you worked and you really worked at what you what you had and how wonderful this is uh lisa for you and how one and and you've learned something here um and that's it
and I can't wait for the live. Let's get the two videos, the last two videos done, and then we will finish and have a wonderful, uh, then you will get your gifts. Thank you so much. Again, I love you. Hagone. So this is, again, my backdrop. I just want you to be able to take a deep breath and see where grandma goes. And, uh, you know, we have enough pain in the world. Let's look at how beautiful this is. And look at this. This sandstone is absolutely beautiful. And look at that hole in the rock. I'm, I would tell you a story about grandpa about that, but I'm not. When I first met him, he almost tipsy turvied off of this. Sometimes you get a really wild wind here and grandpa kind of did that. But look how beautiful this environment is. Just gorgeous. Look at all the shrubbery, the painful. Uh, these are, you don't want to go barefooted out here. But anyways, look how beautiful it is. I wanted you to see this. So take, take a deep breath. You learned about the needles and the thread. Lisa, thank you so much for this opportunity. And remember, Grandma loves you. I hope you are learning things and tucking them in your in your pocket of your mind and learn from it. And when you don't have Walmart to run to, you might have to just go out and whittle your own stuff. You can survive. And you will be, you will be able to look at this beautiful juniper, cedar, gorgeous. The air is beautiful. Say a prayer. Say thank you to your creator, to Jesus Christ, for all that you have. We are so blessed. Look at that. Take a deep breath. <sighs> Remember your relaxation techniques. Grandma has taught you some things you can learn and uh, relax and pray for all the people who are suffering. I hope you remember them in Ukraine and everywhere else. I love you so. Bye.